Hello everyone, I have a quick list of tips and tricks for PAL World that you might find helpful. They're broken down into five categories, transportation, PAL related, progression, building, and hotkey tips. And I think there's at least one thing on this list that's going to help you improve your game. So let's jump right in, starting with some transportation tips and tricks. Okay, this first trick was probably the biggest game changer for me, and this is like the grapple glider trick. All you're gonna need is obviously any variety of grappling gun. Then you're either going to need one of the parachutes or a gliding pal. That is like a calamari, a celery, a hangyu, or a gale claw. Then you're going to need a flat patch of ground, but once you get good at this, you can pretty much do it from anywhere. You're going to aim at the ground just in front of you, pretty much at the extent of the range for whatever grapple you're using. As you reach the end, before you hit the ground and before you leave the grapple, you're going to use your mouse wheel to cycle up or down to a different weapon, and then you're going to hit the space bar or whatever button opens up your glider in order to enter into a gliding animation. You shoot, cycle up, and space bar. And if you get it just right, this is a little bit slow. I was off on my timing there. If you get it just right, you will go flying at maximum speed. So in terms of the other creatures, using this trick, it doesn't matter which one you're using, you will still accomplish this full maximum speed. And then in order to maintain forward progress and stop like falling and losing elevation, you can continuously just hit spacebar or you just exit the flying animation and enter back into it and this will give you much greater sort of like forward momentum if you just keep on like pulsing the glider just like this and my last test here is just going to show you that we can do the same thing with the regular parachute it's just as effective you have just as much speed and the same trick applies that if you exit the glider and then go back into it you can maintain better like forward momentum this way. So this guy here is my preferred glider and this is why. Look how far we're gonna go on one bar of stamina with the hang you. And every time I open up hang you, I get a boost in my elevation. So we're not gonna fall at all. We can basically, we're only limited by our stamina bar in how far we can go here. Hey, a large egg. While we're on the topic of grapples, I'm just gonna be here at the base collecting up all the resources that my pals have been working on and eventually I'm going to become encumbered. So what I always do is I always have two grapples on my inventory at any given time. And the reason for that is because I can use the grapple while I'm encumbered to kind of float around the base and pick up all the garbage that's been left behind. If you have the, the cooldown timer, so if I shoot this, it's got an eight second cooldown timer. What you can do is you can take that item out of your inventory, that grapple gun, and put it back into your hotbar slot, and the timer has automatically been reset. The reason I carry two is because I can cycle one to the other. I take these two grapples here and I switch their spot. So one, two, and then we have an eight second timer, switch, switch spots, and then we've got one, two, reset, switch spots, one, and so on. You guys get the point at this point, right? What, what am I doing here? <laughs> I'm just crawling around, there we go. So of course we all know that we can roll and that we can crouch, but if you are running and you hit crouch, you can do a slide like this and you can actually transition that into a glide and that gives you kind of the same speed boost as does the grapple. So if you don't have the grapple yet or you don't have it with you for whatever reason, you can do a quick power slide into gliding. Trying that again, sprint crouch and glider that'll do it for my transportation tips and tricks let's head into this cave for the first of our pal tips so let's see what we get over here a level 28 grin tail bust so what you do is you just kind of leave the area we're gonna head out here fly to the end of the hallway fly back to this end of the hallway and we'll check what we got this time we have a level 29 Robin Quill and her minions with her. Let's do it a couple more times to see what we can pull. This time we got Cinemoth, level 27. We've got a, oh, Gobfin. Guys, I kind of want to capture this one actually. My bad, we killed it. It's worth noting that if you do kill it like that, you cannot go back out that way and reset it again. You will have to leave the dungeon and reset the timer and then come back an hour or two later. So for the next trick, we're going to instantly resurrect dead or unconscious pals and to do that we're going to need to get some unconscious or dead pals so thank you for your service fuddler appreciate it yep rushor you did a great job there buddy oh nox took that one like a champ 
Okay, well, we'll have to make do with two. All right, here is trick number one. So we have two dead pals here. We have Fuddler and Rushor. One thing that you could do is say, go to your pal box once you get home and you put Fuddler into the pal box and he's just going to come back to life in 10 minutes. It's gonna take him that long to heal up. However, if you put him down into the pals at the base, He's going to drop in here somewhere, dead, and someone's gonna be kind enough to bring him over to a bed. Okay, yes, so I missed it. Someone took him over to bed. Now he's just gonna sleep this off for a little while. It's gonna take him a while to heal up, uh, you know, a minute or so probably, and then he'll be ready to go again. There's a faster way to go about this though, and all you have to do is you have your dead pal. You go to your party here. We have this rush ore. I'm gonna hit R to drop the pal. It's gonna say, are you sure someone else could pick him up? So don't do it out in public, I guess. Drop the pal. He's gonna be in a pal sphere just right here. Now what you're gonna do is you're, you're gonna go to your pal box and I'm just gonna pick up two random pals. You have to fill up your party and then you're gonna pick him up. If you pick him up, and your party is not full, he's gonna go back into your party and he's still going to be dead. But by picking him up this way, he's not in my party currently, obviously, because my party is full. He has gone back to the pal box and he is now fully healed. This is the rush ore right here. He is at maximum health. Okay, so I've queued up some recipes here over at the cooking station. We have one salad, one jam-filled bun, and one baked berry. Let's come over here to the farm area and pick up another berry, and we'll compare all four of them together. So, one red berry is good for 15 nutrition. If you bake that berry, it is good for 21 nutrition and one sanity. And that is why I would always recommend that you feed cooked food to your pals, because sanity is very important, especially if you're working them pretty hard, you don't have access to other things that increase their sanity, like high quality pal beds. Furthermore, you can do the jam filled bun, nutrition 51, sanity six. And then after that, once you unlock it, you should use salad, nutrition 84, sanity 11. And essentially what you're doing here is by feeding them higher tiered cooked food, you're decreasing the frequency that they need to run back to the food box. So I have a food box up here, and I think I have one or two of them out here around the base somewhere. They'll fill up and they'll go work for the rest of the day. They'll come and eat before they go to bed at night and so on. All right, my next tip has to do with the stone pit and the logging site. Now this is a mining base right here. It's also my main base. If I build this stone pit here though, the, all the miners that I have around here will stop focusing on these good mining nodes that I want them to focus on, and they'll stop chopping trees and everything in order to focus on the pit. So they've just built the mining site. You can fit three pals per mining site, and the, the pals will take a preference to working at these sites versus working on the nodes that are elsewhere in my base. So these three pals, are busy here and if one of them decides to take a break has to go eat or whatever another pal will take his place i have i've substituted some of my farmers for more anubis just to show you that these guys will work the other site but there you go one anubis just took a break and another one ran straight over to take his place this has the highest priority for miners and the logging site for loggers so if you're finding that your pals are not mining very efficiently just make sure that you don't have one of those things around that's kind of clogging everything up. Okay, it has just turned nightfall and you can see that all of my pals are coming into the sleeping area to take a nap for the night. However, purposefully, I have left out three Blaze Howl Noct's because all of the dark creatures in the game, the dark element type, and you can see their element types by looking next to their name. This, these guys are fire and dark. All of the dark creatures do not sleep at night. And so sometimes you need to kind of make a tough decision on who to set as a worker for your base. Like I have this Blaze Howl here, regular Blaze Howl, and uh, she has three fire skill or kindling skill. And so she'll be able to cook jam filled buns and make ingots all day long pretty effectively. However, the Blaze Howl Noct also has a level three in kindling and will work 24 seven. So you tell me, who you'd rather have working around your base, the one that works all day and all night or the one that simply works all day. Pals will actually regenerate their sanity when they're sleeping. You can see everyone here is level 100 in sanity because they're sleeping in awesome beds and they are gonna be ready to go for tomorrow's work. These guys though, they never sleep and so they're never going to get that sanity bonus from sleeping in a comfy bed. They will get their sanity from food like we talked about earlier, but not from rest. And just as a little bit of a side note, if you are one that skips through the night, 
try not to skip through the night like early in the evening as the sun is just about to set you're allowed to of course crawl up into your bed and go to sleep for the night and if you go to bed early before your pals go to bed they don't get a chance to sleep and so <laughs> that's gonna make them a little bit unhappy so make sure that you go to bed after your pals go to bed so that they get that good sanity bonus so one thing that i've really neglected to use a lot in my playthrough is the pal deck and one of the things you can do in the pal deck is a couple of great things you can do one of them is you can see your capture bonus right here now if you capture 10 pals you get an xp bonus for the first 10 that you capture the other thing you can do is you can check their habitat and in the habitat box here you can select day or night and it will show you every little tiny specific location that she can possibly spawn. A couple of more pal things here at the base are that uh, what I've found in my playthrough is that pals that are specific to only one task are far more effective than multitasking pals. So for a while I was trying to cool my cooler box here with this cryo links because I think he's cool but ultimately he does a lot of other tasks as well whereas this little guy over here this jolt hog Christ, he only does cooling only at level one but it doesn't really matter i don't think because this jolt hog will just stay in front of the cooler all day long and the food inside only benefits from being cooled when it's actively being cool cooled there's no like residual cooling that lasts throughout the night and plus i think that this jolt hog chris is just cute as a button Another great thing to do is when you're at your base, use one of your party pals to help out the workers. Just set him down and he'll go and do whatever task he thinks is most efficient for him to do at the time. Similarly, oftentimes if I'm spending a lot of time at the base, I will just drop one of my Anubis into my party so he'll hang out with me and he'll he'll go off and do some work when he wants to but say i need something crafted 139 nails i can just use my anubis instead of waiting for one of the base anubis to come up here to get this knocked out as quickly as possible so if you've played the game for a while you probably run into the situation where your pal box is starting to get a little bit full because you've done a lot of breeding you got a lot of extra pals you've gone out on some capturing runs and things are just getting a little bit crowded in here so what do you do with all the extra pals well in my opinion one of the things you probably want to do is sell them off and so i i like bushi as a breeder i have a lot of bushi with good traits and i've used them to breed up some really strong pals but for the most part i can probably start getting rid of some of these guys at this point so i'm just gonna pick four or five guys here and sell them off that was good for 2000 gold and I did a sell-off recently where I made over 100,000. But then of course you have the PAL Essence Condenser. And what the PAL Condenser is going to do is it's going to increase the partner skill for whatever creature that you're condensing. So for example, this Mazarina here will sometimes produce milk when assigned to the ranch at level one. So if I condense a bunch of Muzarinas together, I could increase that to level two, three, four and get more milk every time I do that. This chickpea here, their passive skill is laying an egg at the ranch. So for example, the Bushi that we were selling off before, the passive skill for Bushi is that when activated, it attacks the um, enemy with some kind of a powerful attack here. That's nothing that I'm going to use. I'm not using Bushi in combat, so there's no reason for me to use Bushi in the condensed which is uh, she's notorious for pals getting stuck on i don't know what it is that's why i always destroy it i take it apart when i'm not using it because people get stuck on it too often okay and now on to some progression tips we recently crafted a whole bunch of nails and that was specifically for this next one I'm just gonna grapple trick my way over because i'm very encumbered we're gonna talk to this merchant here and as far as i've learned nails are probably the best bang for your buck in terms of crafting items to be sold so this stack of 290 91 nails is going to translate to 46,000 gold, almost doubling my current amount right there. And then while we're at it, for the most part, I get all of my ammunition and my PAL specific parts like PAL fluids and electric organs and such. I just get them from the trader. It's so much easier to just come to the trader, give them some nails, take home some rifle ammo and call it a wash. And so this is at the Fisherman's Wharf where you can buy some ammo. There's also another trader that I know of and it's the one out in the desert here, this little 
It's the Dune Shelter POI, and there's a trader there that will uh, also barter with ammunition. The one that I use to get like PAL specific parts is this small settlement right here. Things like leather, wool, flame organ, electric organ. You can even do milk and egg if you wanna do all of your cake production more easily without doing the whole ranching thing. So I highly recommend that you mark all of your merchants on the map so that you can revisit them again in the future and check their wares. It's just such an easier way to come to this merchant here and buy, say, you know, a hundred leather. And I don't have to worry about going out and killing, ah, oh, geez, I don't even know, probably 30 or so mammarists to get that much leather. Save myself a ton of time. Just make the pals mine for ingots, turn the ingots into nails, turn the nails into money, turn the money into everything else that you need in the game. Additionally, I also have been getting into the habit of, you see these stars right here, there's a star there, a star there, a star here. I've been marking the cave entrances on the map because I just like to go back to the caves occasionally to do little loot runs or to capture bosses. And it's a good habit to get into to start marking them everywhere. Okay, so this next tip, you and I are going to discover this one together because it's something that I've never done, but I've read about this everywhere. I've seen other people doing it. And that is that you can capture these merchants and bring them to your base. So what I'd like to do today is capture you and we're gonna go capture a black market merchant and we're gonna see how this all works together. All right, it doesn't tell you the percentage when you're going to capture, but clearly it is going to work eventually. <laughs> okay, we've captured the wandering merchant. I'm pretty sure that's a crime. Also got 202 gold coins. That's gonna bring me to my next tip. Okay, we're back to the black marketeer, Shadow Beak. Do your thing. This guy's level 40. This might be a little bit more difficult than I'm intending. Oh, he's got pals. Okay, good to know. Okay, accidentally killed the guy. However, he had... 10,000 gold on him. Another way that you can make some money very quickly is to kill the black market merchants. But now we gotta find another one to capture. Unfortunately, this level 40 black marketeer is at the upper echelon of what my pal spheres are capable of. Every pal sphere has like a 10 level range that it's meant for. These, what are these types again? Oh, by the way, I think we just got them there, nice. Yeah, these are ultra spheres here, and um, those are good for level 30 to 40, I believe. Then you need the legendary sphere to get from 40 to 50. Not that it's impossible to capture things, but it's just far less likely, I guess, with the lower tiered sphere. Okay, so we got both of them. So now what we can do, I can see them, I almost missed them right here because they don't really have an icon, but we have the wandering merchant and the black marketeer. Let's drop them in the base for just a second here and see what they do. And eh, they're just gonna walk around, I think. I don't think that they have any like tasks that they complete. The level one in handiwork, that's all you get. Hopefully we can go over and barter with them once in a while. We can talk to them, they can trade us pals, they can buy things, they can sell things. And from what I've heard, what you can do is if you don't like the selection that they have, you just uh, go over to your pal box, swap them out, swap them back, and the Black Marketeer will appear with an entirely new selection of items. Let's actually just test that out here. We've got this selection here. We'll just remember two Gale Claws and buy. And yes, now he only has the one Gale Claw, a different one and a new selection. That's pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna actually try this next tip and trick with you guys as well. It's something that I read in a comment recently. And that is that I can actually take off my, my regular non like thermal protective metal armor. We will don my Tundra outfits, my cold set of armor. I actually have cold resistant metal armor. We'll wear that instead for added protection. So that is giving me a level two cold resistance. Now, if I take my accessories off and I put on these level one heat resistant shirts, both of them, the theory is that I can now go into the cold biome or the hot biome and not have to swap any type of armor. Okay, we're on Mount Obsidian where I would normally get roasted and you can see my temperature marker there. It's like just on the cusp of being hot, but no, I'm actually in good shape here. Wearing my cold weather armor and two hot weather resistant shirts. And yes, we are A-OK -okay up here in the Arctic area as well. You can see the, the temperature marker there. It is on the same like brink of being cold, but not quite there. All right, so 
part two of this tip is that we need to find ourselves a dungeon up here. Worth mentioning here, I'm in the Arctic area just capturing this pal. If I have my fire pal out, I'm good because it gives me a little bit of thermal protection against the cold. But the second I get off my van worm, I'm suddenly going to become cold because it's nighttime and it's going to be colder at night. So if I just pull him back into a pal sphere, yep, we're instantly taking massive damage. So dangerous to be out here. That little tip I was going over, probably not as effective as I thought it was but hopefully part two of this tip will pay off. And that's gonna require going into one of these Arctic dungeons. And here we go. Oh boy, <laughs> level 43 Wumpa, oh great. And you're probably all aware that certain types of pals have weaknesses to some and advantages to others. For example, right here we have an ice pal, which is weak to fire. That's why you're seeing the red numbers there. But we have a fire creature here in this van worm who is resistant to frost. And so you see that kind of subdued gray color on the damage number. I'm gonna see if I can pull off a very Ooh. unlikely capture here. Hey, I think I got it. Nice. Got a big boss Wumpo, high level too. Okay, the whole reason I did that, this is actually my, my first foray into an Arctic dungeon, is that I've heard that this is a location where you can find the level two heat and cold resistant undershirts. And the theory is that you could wear your regular metal armor here with no cold, or actually, I guess it does have cold resistant level one, but you could just wear your regular armor and you wear one level two heat resistant shirt and one level two cold resistant shirt and you never have to swap your armors. And this, these Arctic dungeons are a great spot to get those undershirts. Dang, unfortunately, we didn't get one on this run right here. I did, however, get this future tech manual. All right, well, a bit of a bust in the demonstration there, but you kind of get the point. The, the point is you don't have to have a cold set of armor, a hot set of armor, and a regular set of armor. There's a way you can finagle it to use one and get the benefits of all three. Okay, here's your next tip right here. If you're struggling to kill a boss, one of these outdoor bosses, not the ones that are in caves, not the ones that are in dungeons, but these ones right here, what you can do is you can set up a pal box nearby. Hold up, hold up. Got a shiny pal over here. Score, lucky and ferocious on that one. Man, that is an excellent find. I'll have to see if there's anything that Fuddler can breed for me. Okay, let's try this again, shall we? Yeah, it's not gonna let me build too close to a special boss facility. Let's try to do it over here then. This looks okay right here. Bring in the pals, sort by level and bring in the first 15. I just want like an aerial view of what's happening here because it's gonna be a little chaotic. <laughs> Look at the army here. Oh, what a great way to take down a big boss. The only trouble you're gonna have doing this is that it's gonna be very difficult to capture them. I got the capture! Guys, I got the capture! Wow, that was like a 5% chance. He is the Earth Emperor. All right, last up on the progression tips here would be, oh my goodness, you guys are making an absolute mess out here. The tip is though, that whenever you see a skill fruit tree, you can see here at my breeding base, there's a skill fruit tree here in the back. And yes, the skill fruits have respawned. Now, in my experience, it's gonna take roughly four to six hours or so, maybe eight hours for these to respawn. But this is probably the fifth time that I've harvested that one tree there. So it's a good idea to mark them on your map or perhaps even build a base nearby. This is a great base, nice and flat, perfect for breeding. And every once in a while, you can just drop by there and get a couple of extra skill fruits. Okay, let's move on to some base building tips and tricks. Let's start off with this one. If you have some trees or even ore nodes or rocks or anything that respawns around your base and you don't want them there anymore, it's as simple as chopping them down. And in this case, I'm going to build a house plant right over top of where that was growing and that tree will no longer respawn there. There, so if you're having issues with pals getting stuck in the trees or pals being tasked to do logging, but you don't want them to do logging, you can simply do that and sort of maintain some sort of an aesthetic to your base that's not too terrible. Another quick recommendation is to do what I'm doing here and put storages out next to all of the nodes here so that the trip is very, very quick. Like imagine it's gonna be instantaneous. Whoever just picked that up threw it right immediately into this box. Okay, let's now say for the sake of demonstration that I want to go to my other base, my breeding base, and I want to build myself a flower bed over there. Well, instead of collecting up my flowers and my cement and my stone and my wood from wherever it is in this base here, what I can do is just build a ghost structure here. And before it's built, 
just cancel it, and all of those canceled resources just went into my inventory. Then we can zip over to the other base, and without having dug through any of my boxes, I can simply set down a flower box over here right there and the same thing works for crafting in fact i've been meaning to do this next part and i'm gonna do it now and get it over with just for demonstration purposes i think i can make do with just a campfire here let's put a campfire somewhere where it's not gonna get stepped on too often how about over here okay and then i can say hot milk and i can say max and start production and then cancel and all of the milk has now been transported into my inventory from the storage boxes over there. In fact, I think it was in the cooler box over there that that um, foxicle is working on. And I also need to bring my eggs over to my other base, so we'll just max out the fried egg production, cancel that, and then I can zip back to the other base where I can have my more powerful pals work on cakes. There you go, and that brings me to yet another tip, and that is that if you see i have my garden it's an indoor garden over here and all of my pals will eventually harvest everything up and they'll bring it over they would like to put it into this feed box but the feed box only has room for the berries i stuffed one honey in the rest of the slots here so that the pals would then default to bringing everything into the cooler box so all of my tomatoes my eggs and milk are in this box over here and for some reason they haven't been picking up the lettuce. And since we're on the topic of feed boxes and stuff, every once in a while you can come over to your feed boxes or your cooler boxes and you can just hit the sort button and it will reset the spoilage timer. It's pretty common knowledge now, I think, but it is good to reiterate that because uh, some of these things, especially like birthday cakes, if you were not storing your birthday cakes in the breeding pen, you certainly don't want those to go bad. They're expensive and difficult to produce. So this final little segment to my tips and tricks video is gonna be just some random hotkeys that are that you need to know. The first one is gonna be down here, this R button for quick stack. This will take anything from your inventory that has a stack going in the chest and it will automatically move them over for you. Another one that I glossed over early on is the fact that if you look down, well, if, if you hover over a pal and you look at the lower right corner, it does say, F for view details. And so any of your pals here, you can just hit F and you can get into their menu. You can swap out their skills here with different skills. You can get more details on basically everything to do with this specific pal. Okay, so for this next one, let's say that you wanted to take a couple of some ingredient that's in a chest here. So let's say I wanted to get 10 honey. Of course, you know that you can control click to take one at a time and you can shift click to take half at a time but if you just hold shift and keep clicking it just continues having the stack and i guess i never caught on to that early on so i thought i'd share it with you guys here now just hold shift and keep clicking until you get the desired amount and the last couple here are going to be the quick select for your pals and the quick select for your pal spheres so you know that it says right on the side there you can hit one or three to cycle through your pals and if you hit two it will cycle through your spheres and if you do the mouse wheel it cycles through your items however you might not have quite realized that if you hold q you can hold back your sphere and then you can use the mouse wheel to cycle them you can see the color changing on the sphere and then right click of course to cancel and to cycle your pals in the same way you just hold e like you're going to throw a pal out and then you can use the mouse wheel you can see on the left there, it is changing the selection for the PAL. Okay, my friends, that is gonna have to do it for my tips and tricks here for PAL World. By no means am I an expert in this game. I haven't even beaten it. I'm only like level 40 or something right now. So if you have any tips for me or that you wanna share with the community, make sure you let me know in a comment down below. And perhaps in the future, when I make another video like this, I'll share that with everyone else. If you're interested in more PAL World content in the future, make sure you're subscribed and I will catch you hopefully in the next video. Hey everyone, I just wanted to say thank you for watching, for leaving a like, but most of all, thank you to the long list of amazing supporters that you see right here. I hope this episode has earned your subscription and I can't wait to show you the next one. Best wishes to all and goodbye.